Hi, I'm Casey Butler. This is Butler Scientific Communications, and welcome to our four-part video series on preparing your scientific CV. So for this first video, we're going to talk through how to choose what style of CV you are going to use and how to organize and structure the different parts of your CV. If you're interested in the other video series, please be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can get those other three videos as they are released. Otherwise, if you're ready to talk about both choosing the style of your CV and how to structure your CV, let's get started. Application season is going to be here before we know it, so this is a really good time to sit down and look at our CV and make sure that it is absolutely optimized for whatever we're going to be submitting it to in the coming fall season. And so with this first video, we're gonna talk, we're gonna start the very basics, and we're gonna talk about first how to choose what style of CV you want to use. Because if you are not aware, academic versus industry CVs look very different. So your CV is going to be structured very differently depending on where you are applying. Additionally, and this is something I didn't learn until I moved from the US to Europe, that European CVs are structured very differently from American CVs as well. So if you're going to be applying to somewhere across the pond uh, from where you currently are, this is also going to be a great video that you're going to want to pay attention to. So first, we're going to start right in at choosing the style, and we're going to talk about academic versus industry CVs because this is going to be the biggest difference that most people are going to see. So in academic CVs, the first thing to know here is that an academic CV is an informational document. It is a document that is designed to get all of the information, take all of the information about you that is important and relevant for your research experience and put that in one document that somebody can skim and find that information. Now, I know that that sounds like what the industry CV should be also, that an industry CV should also be an informational document, but actually the industry CV is going to be more of a marketing document. The main point here with the industry CV is to get you in the door, to get you an interview. So this is going to be a bit more of a showy marketing document than the academic CV. The first place that you can notice the difference between these two CVs as well is going to be typically in the length. Whereas the academic CV can be a lot longer, it is generally often longer than two pages, an industry CV is going to be limited to two pages, usually front and back if you have it printed out. And so here, whereas the academic CV is designed to give all of that information that might be important and that might be relevant, the industry CV is only going to want that very specific and very relevant information for the job and the position that you are applying to. So a lot is going to be cut out of the academic CV for the industry style CV. Though in fairness, it's not so often that you actually need to have a hard copy of a CV anymore. So the front and back part isn't going to be as big of a consideration. And again, while that academic CV is going to give basically a comprehensive overview of your career and all of these different categories we're going to include, the industry CV is again going to focus on only those parts that are relevant for the position at hand. This also means that the academic CV is going to have a much more fixed and formal style, whereas the industry CV can be a flashier document. It can have more colors, things in different boxes, put in different places. It is going to be designed to be a bit more eye-catching than your standard academic CV that is going to be a very formal and standard document. And so here I have some examples of what your CVs might look like. I do want to note it, or make note that in both of these CVs, these are a European style CV. You will see in a moment why that is true. But here just notice that the uh, academic CV is obviously much different from the industry CV. Uh, while it, here it is also longer, it is also not quite as, I will say, flashy. You don't have big blocks of color on it and things like that. It is a more fixed formal style document than the more industry-based CV, which is going to be a bit more flashier, a bit more standout, designed to catch somebody's eye a little bit more than the academic CV. And again, then the major difference here is basically just what each one of these CVs is used for. While the academic CV is designed to give this big overarching picture of your career as an academic, the industry CV is going to have these colorful spots, a lot more white space, and is going to be designed to highlight key information that you need the hiring manager to see in order for you to get that interview. 
So then the first thing you're going to want to do here is choose whether you're making an academic style CV or an industry style CV when you go to sit down and prepare this. If you are in doubt or if you might be applying to multiple positions, some in academia and some in industry, then start with the academic style CV uh, just because you're going to have more information on that and then you'll be able to cut information to make the industry CV where it's not going to be as easy to add information for each position. I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more depth in the fourth video of this series about making a master CV, but for now just keep in mind that um, you're going to have more information in the academic CV. It's easier to cut information than it is to add information in when you are tailoring to each position. Next, we're going to discuss the differences between American and European CV. And like I said before, I had no idea that there was a difference between American and European CVs until I moved to Europe and everybody's CVs looked very different from mine. And so I mentioned on the, the pictures I showed before that I show here again now that there these CVs were obviously European style CVs and the reason here is because there is a picture on them and this is one of the biggest differences between American and European style CVs is that a European style CV is pretty much always going to contain a photo whereas the American style ones are pretty much never going to contain a photo. Along with the photo in the European CVs there's usually a lot of personal information that is also included. This is going to be information like your marital status, the number of children that you have, and even your permit status if you are an expat living in that country. So this is all information that usually just goes right at the top of the CV along with your address and phone number. And again, in the European style of CVs, usually this information is included, whereas in American style CVs, this information is actually never included. It is illegal to hire based on any of these factors, and so for that reason it is usually also just never put on the CV. The next difference is that European style CVs often have a more extensive section for hobbies and extracurricular activities. Um, oftentimes here, some of your basic everyday hobbies, the things you like doing in life, are actually included in your CV, whereas in US or American style CVs this is almost never the case. It is usually only professional activities that are contained on the CV, and so the hobbies and extracurricular activities generally get left off unless they can show some kind of quality that is desirable for this position, such as leadership skills or volunteer skills or something like that. Otherwise, there are a couple other stylistic differences that can generally be found between American and European style CVs, but these are not hard and fixed rules like things like the photo and personal information. So first, American style CVs can be a little bit longer and they are usually a little bit longer can, and can regularly be over three pages for academic style CVs. Whereas European style CVs do tend to still limit these in size to maybe a two or three pages. They keep these a little bit more concise than the American style ones where your CVs can get quite extensive. Additionally, in an American style CV, your education experience of uh, 10 plus years in the past is usually fairly limited, keeping the CV to a more relevant indication of your education in terms of what is in the more recent past. On the, in the contrary, uh, European style CVs tend to have a comprehensive view of your education. So even from very long time ago, you know, 10, 20 plus years, you're going to still see the same types of information about education on the CV. Along those same lines, the European CVs usually also list education first or fairly high up in the CV, whereas American style CVs do tend to prioritize work and research experience over education, especially when the work and research experience is more recent and more related to the position that you are applying to. And then finally, and this is something that I see just personally stylistically between the two different CVs, um, American CVs tend to be much stronger at self-promoting whereas the Europeans tend to consider the American style of self-promoting to be a bit too over the top and so their style of writing is a little bit more humble. Now this is just something to keep in mind if you're trying to tailor a CV for one place or the other, perceptions do matter and so if you're American applying to Europe, maybe try to tone down the CV a little bit. I'm not saying take out the stuff about self-promoting because I am a fan of this. I think you need to be your biggest self-promoter but the Europeans might see that as a bit grandiose, and so if possible, try to tone these down, try to humble them. Europeans, you might want to consider this in the opposite way. Americans are expecting a style that is more self-promoting, and if you take a humble track when approaching your CV, it's going to seem not as good maybe or not as impressive as some of the other CVs that are going to cross the desk of American hiring agents. 
So next we're going to talk about how to organize and structure your CV because there's a, there are a lot of options for the different sections you can include and what order you can put those sections in. So first, if you are applying for something that has a fixed or even suggested CV format, uh, again, even if this isn't mandatory, this makes your job so easy because my suggestion here is to use their suggested format exactly. Use exactly what they say, even if it's just a suggestion, not mandatory, because the person who is reviewing your CV will then know exactly where to look for the key information that they want. They're not going to have to think too hard about this. And what you want to do whenever possible is make the job easier for the person who is reviewing your work. So when you are given a suggested format, use that suggested format. Now, unless it is mandatory that you include every single section of a suggested format, if there is a section that you don't have anything for, then delete that, but keep the other sections in the same order. Now, there are going to be some applications, some funding applications, usually, that will want you to have every single section, even if you don't have anything to put in it. Um, try to find something to put in it if you possibly can, but if not, then leave those sections blank. If it is mandatory to have it there, then don't delete it. But if it is not mandatory to have it there, then definitely delete it because if there is no mandatory format, you definitely don't want to have a blank section of your CV, which is just going to call attention to the fact that you didn't have anything to put in that section. And then because I often get a lot of Marie Curie Fellowship applications in the fall, I have here an example for the suggested format for a Marie Curie Fellowship CV. Uh, every client that I have, I have them set up their CV in exactly this order using exactly this structure because everybody who is reviewing the Marie Curie applications will know exactly where to look for the information that they want. So definitely try to structure your CV according to a suggested guideline if one is given. So next, where it gets a little bit more tricky is when you aren't given a suggested format because this gives you a lot more leeway, but it means you have a lot more decisions that you have to make when you go to set up and structure your CV. So what I have here is just a list of the common sections of a CV. And what I suggest you do is go through, pick these sections that you have or that apply to you and all that apply to you and put them into your CV. We will cover ordering them in just one second. But first you're gonna have things like your personal information, which again, depending on if you're applying in the US versus in Europe, you're gonna have a different amount of personal information, but even in the US, you're still gonna have your name, your phone number, um, maybe an email address, a website, something like that, uh, up at the top. So personal information, uh, you could have a section of summary of relevant skills. Now, this is not mandatory, but it is a section that I really like at the top of a CV, right under your personal information, because it allows you to put three to five bullet points right up front on your CV, that is going to summarize what you think are the most important things you did that are relevant to this position that you are applying to. So it allows the first thing that people see at the front of your CV to be the, what you think is the key information that makes you a good fit for the position you're applying to. So it is possible to have a section on summary of relevant skills. If you do have that, I suggest putting it immediately as the first section right after you finish the, the heading with the personal information. Next, you're going to have things like your education, your research experience, both academic or industrial, teaching experience, leadership experience. Somewhere in here, you should include mentoring experience. Then things like prizes and awards, which is going to include any funding that you might have. Unless you have a lot of funding, you can consider making that its own section. You will include publications, patents, presentations, conferences, and absolutely make sure you distinguish between conferences attended and any conferences that you happen to help organize because that's going to be a completely different skill set and you want to make sure those are clearly differentiated um, potentially even with separate sections in your CV. If you're applying in Europe you might also consider then adding a section of hobbies and it's usually a section of your language skills and your level in each one of those languages. And now finally when you are going to set up and structure your CV now that you have all these sections the last thing that we want to talk about is how you are going to order these sections. And so the way that I usually suggest doing this is you start with your personal information at the top. You have a section of your summary of relevant skills. If you have that section, it's going to come first right after your personal information. And then after that, you want to order your sections first based on the relevance to the position that you are applying to. So if you are applying to a research position, for instance, I highly suggest having your very next section be research experience. 
maybe teaching experience and then having your education come after that. If you're applying to something that is more of a teaching position, then you might want to have that teaching experience first, followed by sections ordered in the order of relevance for this position. So if you will also be doing research, then maybe it's teaching followed by research. If this isn't going to be a research heavy position, then maybe teaching followed by education. So here you just really want to think about based on the position you are applying to, what are going to be the most important parts of your CV and try to order according to that. And then after that, if you were maybe stuck between how to order a couple different sections, the next criteria that I want you to use to decide how to order is order based on which sections are the strongest for you. And so you always wanna have, again, those most relevant sections towards the top of the CV so they're easiest to find. So if you can't decide how to order based on relevance for the position, then put the ones that you are strongest in first so they are higher up in the CV so they're more likely to get a little bit more of the reviewer's attention. For me personally, I tend to think that it's more important to put those research positions higher up in the CV for anybody who has performed research experience. This may be my American roots showing though because I said the American CVs tended to prefer research over education. But I do think that it differentiates you a little bit more and makes you stand out a little bit more by putting important points about the research that you did instead of just having your education listed. Because those are usually pretty fixed points of just the school you attended, the years you attended, the degree you earned, etc. Okay, the research experience helps you, I think, stand out a little bit more. It helps give the hiring manager a better idea of who you are as a candidate than just this listing of your education experience. I hope this video helped you choose your style of CV, help you structure your CV. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to get the video next week on the information that you are going to put in that CV. If you're watching this video later, you can find it already here. So you can just go straight to the next video. And otherwise, happy CV preparation and happy writing.